shot, but such power in his shooting. When you look at um, what he's done, and then you know you go by his goals in the, the Premier League year, you know, they're not going to be they're not going to be beaten. Supporting a football club is all about dreams and aspirations. And for those who follow Newcastle United, those dreams focus on the iconic number nine shirt. The history of the club is dominated by legends of the past, who wore it with pride and scored hundreds of goals. Jackie Milburn for the Newcastle fans was, was the first you know, iconic number nine. Number nine, you know, signified goals. Milburn. You know, he was adored and still is adored by Newcastle fans. It's the same with Malcolm McDonald. You know, he wore the number nine, scored the goals. Newcastle fans loved him because of that. There'll be people that's not even born yet. When they come to 20, 30 years in the future, they'll know about Alan Shearer because he'll be talked about in Newcastle United folklore. This is the best number nine Newcastle's ever had. Alan Shearer grew up in Newcastle on Tyneside a fan of Newcastle United. His childhood hero was Kevin Keegan, who joined the club in 1982. Keegan, the player, was integral to their promotion to the English First Division. I certainly remember him following him uh, around the pitch when he was saying goodbye to the fans in a blue tracksuit and trying to get on the pitches with the, yeah, with the cameras to try and get in behind him. And off he went in his helicopter and I thought, I want a piece of this, I like this, I like this feeling. And I think that's the first time really when I thought, I want to play for Newcastle and I want to wear the number nine shirt. He shared his boyhood dream with thousands of others. But local scout Jack Hickson presented Alan's father with an opportunity 300 miles away on England's south coast. I think his first reaction was, do I want to be a channel swimmer or... Oh, what about Southampton? You know, whereabouts are we? You better ask Alan. The prospect of a professional contract meant leaving home comforts behind. But aged just 14, Shearer flourished in Southampton, embracing his newfound independence and freedom. My memories were of getting my first pay packet of, um, of £27.50 a week and thinking, I'm rich here, I'm a millionaire. We got our digs paid for, we got money for a bus pass, but because I lived near the ground anyway, the old Dell, I didn't have to get it, so I kept that money as well. But I enjoyed the freedom of, of, of being or living and supporting for myself. He adapted quickly, developing friendships and a strong character. In the mid-1980s, Southampton was an ideal breeding ground for young players. And Shearer impressed manager Chris Nicholl, who gave him his home debut against Arsenal in April 1988. It proved to be unforgettable. I'd come on a couple of times as a, as a substitute, but I hadn't started the game. And then Chris Nicholl, the manager, came up to me um, at, I don't know, about 11 o'clock, half 11, just as I was about to have, um, have a pre-match meal, and said to me, you're playing, you're in. Dream stuff, wasn't it? It was, it was just, I could never imagine to go into the first team against an Arsenal side and, and score hat trick at, uh, at 17. I remember my old youth team manager, Dave Merrington, they had me in the next morning um, cleaning the kit, which was a sort of bring me back down to earth. But looking back, it was a great thing to do. Despite his outstanding debut, Shearer was integrated into the Southampton first team slowly. Yet it was clear he had strength, self belief, and an eye for goal. One header at Old Trafford helped knock Manchester United out of the FA Cup. I'd love to, uh, to come up here, to come back up here one day and uh, maybe play for one of the teams up here, but um, I might be down to sell them at the moment. Shearer was widely expected to sign for Manchester United, but in 1992, it was newly promoted Blackburn Rovers, managed by Kenny Dalglish, who won the race for his signature. For us to get him was a real coup. I'm sure there was three or four others that were interested at the same time as, as ourselves. But when we met him and you spoke to him, uh, you knew as a person that he would be the right one to, to take in. And then I'd got a call from a, a representative from Manchester United a day later saying that uh, they were interested in me. And I never heard anything back. So for me, the allegation that I've turned Manchester United down twice is, is not quite correct. 
Blackburn was basically my only option. Financed by local multi-millionaire Jack Walker, Blackburn paid a then British record fee of £3.6 million for Shearer. His second season saw Blackburn finish runners-up to Manchester United, but Shearer scored 31 goals from 40 games and won the Football Writers' Player of the Year award. We weren't the best team in the world ability-wise, but what we had better than anyone else was an incredible team spirit. And in 1994, the arrival of a new strike partner, Chris Sutton from Norwich City, pointed towards a changing of the guard at the top of English football. You know, our strengths were at Blackburn. We had two good wingers in Jason Wilcox and Stuart Ripley. And, you know, I think it's fair to say, you know, myself and Alan were, were quite physical players. We had just had that, that understanding and it worked, it worked incredibly well and we both um, played well, scored goals and it was successful. The games which stick out in my mind was uh, that season with the Man United games. There was fierce rivalry there because uh, we, we came into the big league and took the big boys on and succeeded. And of course when that happens, people aren't going to like it. Manchester United won home and away when the clubs met in the league. Tim Sherwood's late equaliser controversially ruled out for a foul by Shearer on Roy Keane. As the season neared its climax and the pressure intensified, Blackburn's challenge faltered. But against Newcastle, Shearer turned the tide. That was certainly a game we didn't deserve to win, but that's when you need your big players coming to the fore, and you know, possibly that was the most important goal in his career. I still think it's a foul. But, um, you know, that's what Alan was all about, you know, he'd make sure that he was there first and he, he was the one that wanted it, uh, wanted it so much to get it in the back of the net. The league title would go to the final day and with a two-point advantage over their rivals, Blackburn knew that victory against Liverpool would see them crowned Premier League champions. My mindset at the moment was, you know, how would we over ever get over this if, if we lost it from this position. I remember as if it was yesterday going to Anfield um, knowing that we, if we won at Anfield then the league was ours. But of course we didn't win at Anfield, we got off to a good start, we went in 1-0 and then the last few minutes uh, it was 1-0 and then Jamie Redknapp and John Barnes scored for Liverpool and then they beat us 2-1 and I remember everyone's faces at the back uh, looking at the, the supporters thinking we've, we've thrown the league away. And then I can just remember euphoria that we'd heard the final whistle had gone at, um, had gone at Upton Park and Man United hadn't been able to, uh, to beat West Ham. And of course, our result at Anfield was, was irrelevant. We'd, uh, we'd, we'd won the league. Jack Walker's dream had been realised. His record investment in first Shearer and then Sutton led to a league partnership worth 49 goals. Shearer's tally of 34 led to his fellow professionals voting him Player of the Year. He had won his first major trophy, and the potential for more was obvious. But that summer, Kenny Dalglish stepped down as manager of Blackburn to become director of football. Ray Harford took over. I didn't have any inclination of him going upstairs to be director of football. Despite my huge respect for, uh, and my love for, for Ray Harford, uh, probably one of the best coaches I've, I've had, or did have in my career, but when you're in a position of strength, you have to bring in, for, to freshen it up, two or three big-name players. And our, mis our Ray's mistake was, I think, he said he'd give the guys a chance who won the league. And, and I think we paid for that. The following season, Blackburn's form was indifferent. Eliminated from the Champions League at the group stage, they finished seventh in the Premier League. Shearer's goal scoring continued. He was again the division's top scorer with 31 goals. As a youth at Southampton, his form had brought international recognition in 1990. 13 goals in 11 games for England's under-21s led to a first senior cap against France in 1992. I just remember walking out of Wembley and looking around and, and I just thought, wow, this is just incredible. I just loved it. I loved the, the buzz of, of putting, that, uh, putting that England shirt on. Incredible. It proved to be a dream start. Shearer scored the first and created the second for strike partner Gary Lineker. To be honest, it's, it's a dream come true. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for someone to uh, knock me on the head and wake me up. Back page headlines followed his debut. But England's malaise under manager Graham Taylor saw them fail to qualify for the 1994 World Cup. 
Two years later, football came home. Euro 96 was held in England. The excitement mounted, but Shearer hadn't scored an international goal for two years. Les Ferdinand and Robbie Fowler were the men in form for their country. Terry Venables sort of pulled me to one side before a training session, and he said to me, whatever happens, you will start Euro 96. You will be uh, the number nine, my centre forward, in that first game. Those words were exactly what Shearer needed to hear. Despite a tide of media pressure against his selection, Venable stood firm. Whilst many others may have been in form, Shearer remained the manager's trusted choice. They were actually, um, you know, biting at the bit to, to get in there. And I knew that the guys that got their chance would have, to, would have to really do well to keep these other guys out. And they did. Thankfully, I got off to a good start and scored in the first game. And, of course, the, my confidence was up and I wanted to get out and play and prove a point to, to all the people that had, had been saying, well, he shouldn't start, leave him out. Shearer's first half goal against Switzerland was the perfect riposte, but better was to follow. He opened the scoring against Scotland before Paul Gascoigne sealed a 2-0 win. Their final group opponents were the Dutch and their formidable Ajax stars who'd won the Champions League a year earlier. They had a good side out, but we, we did tear them apart because of the way we played and the confidence that those boys played with. It was a brilliant performance augmented by the link-up play between Shearer and Teddy Sheringham. We complemented each other's game. He knew my game, I knew his. He, a lot of the time, he would like to go short and get the ball, which, which left me one-on-one, -on -one and one-on-one, and -on -one I fancied my chances. After defeating Spain on penalties, England faced Germany in the semi-final. At Wembley, England and Shearer made the perfect start. It was brilliant because it was a set piece that we'd worked on, Tony Adams. He got to the near post, flicked it on, and of course, Alan, his, his timing was exceptionally good. He just got ahead of the uh, defender, the German defender, and stuck it in the back of the net. Germany levelled through Stefan Kunz, and despite some near misses, most notably Paul Gascoigne's agonising lunge in extra time, the game would be decided on penalties. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy to, to go and stand there in front of 80 or 90,000, um, knowing there's 20 or 30 million people uh, watching. Thankfully, mine went in, but I mean, I felt for I felt for Gareth um, that his was the, the the crucial miss. But you know, no blame attached to anyone taking penalties. At least they've got up, shown the courage to get up there and take it.